Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. We're today talking about a, a species of birds that generates tons of questions in the late winter, early spring time, uh, and can all, all year long as well. But the red winged blackbird, let's go ahead and get him up on, on the stage here. Uh, it's one of the more common uh, birds in North America, one of the most widespread birds in North America, and also one of the most numerous birds in North America. Yet they do generate lots of questions. Very curious uh, uh, bird. It is, it's aggressive. It is showy. It's loud. It, uh, it you know, it's very proud, if you want to say that. Uh, and, and people see them and they're strikingly colored uh, for being a black bird. Uh, they have a lot of color to them. And first, I thought I would uh, go into a little bit about their family lineage. Uh, and then we'll talk about male versus females and their their habits, nesting habits and migration patterns and things like that. But the reason there's so many questions right now, because for most of us in North America, they're returning in huge numbers. I know the guy, you guys to the south have had them all winter. And there are places all across the lower 48 that do have them in smaller numbers during the winter. But it's a, a, after that a winter season when they return from the deep south uh, and the wet coastal areas and things like that down there that we start to see huge numbers of them. And that's going on right now. But the first, the family lineage. Uh, red-winged blackbirds, uh, they're in a group of birds, the blackbird group, as we call it, and that is icterity. Uh, and their relatives may surprise a lot of people. Now, you wouldn't be surprised to know that they are related to the common grackle. Another bird, a uh, bigger blackbird uh, that is coming in right now. This is a male taking flight in a beautiful picture. So that might not surprise you. And even if you live in areas where you have a lot of cattails and uh, where the red-winged blackbirds love to live, especially in the western part of the country, you may be familiar with the yellow-headed blackbird. Uh, and they are close relatives to the red wing, and they do live in the same habitat. Uh, and they, those cattail marshes, uh, the, the, the yellow heads seem to be a little more dominant. They get the, the more prime spot in a cattail marsh where the red wings are more on the periphery. So uh, no surprise that they're related to them. But the one that surprises most people is that they are related to the Baltimore Orioles and the Oriole groups, the Bullock's Orioles and all of them. They're in, those Orioles are in the family Icteridae, which are the blackbirds. So uh, when you see the red-winged blackbirds and that, that beautiful bright color to their shoulder patches, then you can kind of, a lot of people connect them to the Orioles a little bit that way. But look at the bill, the bill shape on the red wing. Let's pull this one up. There's a beautiful shot of them of a male displaying and uh, showing off his epaulets and they uh, let advertising for the females and, and being territorial and trying to be intimidating to the other males. And he's singing and he, uh, he really does have a unique song. And I'm going to play it for you from the app here. This is the Sibley's app. Uh, this is their Kankali song, which is so typical. If you live in an area that uh, uh, your ponds and and uh, wet uh, pastures, you know, wet areas and prairies, whatever, uh, it, especially if that's cattails, you've got red winged blackbirds. You know that song. It is uh, very very common, and they're just now. Especially, it's so funny because you, a lot of times you'll see this behavior on roadsides when you're going down, and they have wet ditches along. If they have wet ditches with some cattails growing in it, you'll see these guys sitting up on uh, road signs and things like that with their the red showing and singing. But one of the things that, that does confuse people is whenever they're feeding, they're coming in now and they're in there they're feeding around bird feeders with a lot of other red winged blackbirds, they may not show that red. And that is confusing to folks. A lot of times you will see this type of presentation by them where they can uh, cover those red epilepsy when they are around uh, and they don't want to be aggressive. So if they want to be feeding among others, then it's not, a, you know, they don't want to be aggressive and it cause trouble and get run off and they run, they have to chase each other around the, the, uh, the pecking. Now they do that a lot out there on their nesting territories and they may do it at feeders, but usually, or especially early in the season, we get this. And this is confusing for a lot of people. People will call and say, Oh, 
I saw a yellow winged blackbird. They're only supposed to be in Brazil or wherever. No, this is typical for uh, red winged blackbirds. They can cover that red up, but whenever they want to advertise for the ladies, uh, they they can expose that red there and start singing. And this is they, 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 a lot of times they'll hold their wings out to the side and and get all crazy like that. So it's really really cool. Now one of the things that's happening now with them returning, uh, the the typical migration pattern is the males come in first. And so you'll look out one morning and all of a sudden you've got 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 or 500 male red-winged blackbirds in your yard uh, all around, but you, you may not see any females. That is very typical. The females usually follow in about two weeks after the males on the big push of migration. Here's a Here's a female red-winged blackbird. She doesn't look anything like the male, uh, except for the shape of the bill. Just like that Oriole bill and the blackbird bill, all the blackbird bills are pretty much the same. This is a great uh, profile view of that bill. And, you know, you compare that to the Oriole, I'm going to throw that up there. Look how, look how the, the, the Oriole bill and the red wing black bill are very, very, very close, very similar. Well, the red wing, female red wings look like big striped sparrows and people get confused with them and, and say i've got this the sparrow i can't identify well the bill is different it's more pointed than a sparrow's bill and they're larger you know they're 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 the same size as the males uh you know I, i've covered the topic of sexual dimorphism and that's a prime example like the the cardinals the male and female cardinal red male and female red winged blackbirds uh, show sexual dimorphism you can a female has to sit on the nest she has to be camouflaged and uh, the male is you know up, up advertising and being territorial and, and, and being showy where she needs to be concealed down in those marshes. And that's where they do nest. They do nest in cattail marshes and uh, like say wet, weedy fields. And I, I read a study one time that talked about the size of their territories. I and mean, we know, you know, the great example would be an eagle. Eagles have huge uh, territories, you know, they, they, depending upon where they are, and they get it, it can cover many, many acres. That are, you know, whereas the red winged blackbirds, a lot of their territories are about three feet in diameter because they're they're packed into a cattail marsh where they, they have several nests in there, and they're and, and so their territories are very small. That doesn't mean the males aren't aggressive to one another three feet away, but they and they are. But one of the things that leads to being so cramped together like that is you get a lot of cheating in the world of red winged blackbirds. I mean, studies show that like 50% of the nest uh, eggs in one nest will be from different parents. So the males visit and they have several females that he will mate with and the females will allow males to visit the several different males uh, in that closer quarters. You can see where that's much more likely to happen than a very large territory where you're not going to get interlopers coming in as often. But in uh, the, the cattail marshes and things for the that these uh, red winged blackbirds live in, it they in the winter months especially uh, they they don't they'll roost in flocks. I uh, understand pretty much all year round. Around uh, breeding ter system is a lot smaller flocks, but in winter their flocks can number the millions. And they'll, they'll be mixed with those grackle and those brown-headed cowbirds and other blackbird species whenever they're they're roosting. And it's giant uh, flocks you see uh, at, at coming into roost at night in a big clump of trees or a cattail area or something like that. But the, uh, the in, in the breeding season, their, their uh, roost will be a little bit a lot smaller than that, a lot smaller than that, not a little bit smaller. Uh, they do eat lots of insects. You know, at your feeders, they're attracted by grain. They, you know, the spills of millet and crack corn, things like that. And for people who want to avoid having a lot of them at their bird feeders, and that, we love red winged blackbirds, one or two of them, but when you have 50, that can be very, very troublesome in a bird feeder station, and your other birds can't get any. But they do eat lots of insects, lots of them during the nesting season. Uh, right now, of course, it's early and there's not a lot of bugs out there. So uh, this is a great picture of a female with a big old worm. She's going to probably go down and feed her babies in her nest. So uh, the, the red winged blackbird, fascinating uh, species and so well known, but a lot of things not as well known about them. So I thought you might want to learn a little bit more about the red winged blackbird. Uh, great idea for a program. If you want me to concentrate or do a species profile on another species of bird that you might want to learn more about, just send that in. Let me know. All the information's in the description below the video. 
Thanks for the, the, the watching. Give us a like. Give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Until then, come on. Let's talk birds.